we all want life to go smoothly happily without any disturbances without any unexpected uh, setbacks we hope that things will only keep getting better and better and if at all there are some small hitches here and there we'll get over it maybe some small health problems go to a reliable doctor and he tells you what to do and within no time you are okay once in a while some sort of health i mean uh, uh, financial or economic uh, um, problem okay you tolerate for some time you overstep and then you move on but what happens when you undergo a setback which seems to be very serious there are few people some i know uh, who are you know so used to taking care of their own needs that they will never ever ask for help from anybody just to give you an example i knew a wonderful person who was a schoolmaster and lived a very simple life for 30 years he worked in the same uh, school his wife also had a small job and she was busy one daughter they got her married and husband and wife were living a very calm life once he went to his doctor and he was told that he is suffering from an incurable disease for which there is no cure it's just a matter of months before he will pass off when he realized that it is incurable he said that i don't want to trouble anybody i don't want to go running from doctors to uh, spend money and all that and i don't even want to tell my wife and daughter why make them miserable and he continued to go to school and he continued to perform his duties and he continued to just survive on painkillers only one week before his death the disease hit him so badly that he got bedridden and that is when people came to know and he said yes i have known this for months and i have just been waiting for it don't take me to any doctor i want to die peacefully at home now those are really courageous and exceptional people the second category is those who look for somebody to whom they can pass the buck my father my uncle my so and so my best friend inevitably takes charge of my life whenever i have any issue i know that if i go to such and such person the issue will be resolved i have a doctor for example you know who any disease any ailment anything even if he is not competent or qualified he will tell which is the correct path and he will see to it that the proper treatment is uh, given and it is successful so sometimes we do that then there is a third category of people who uh, rely on faith whatever happens after all there is god to take care of me there is a supernatural force which will do justice which will heal me if i am not uh, uh, you know doing well and i will put all my faith in that supernatural or in god or in the you know scriptures or in the guru or whatever it is and i will see that i have known of people you know who suffered from let's say cancer and refused to go for treatment saying that god will heal uh, me i will only pray to uh, god unfortunately you know what happens when uh, you know you don't uh, take the proper treatment and you just want to be whatever it is i respect their wishes and whatever they have done in their uh, uh, lives but what happens where you have an ailment you go to a doctor and the doctor doesn't seem to be finding the right uh, uh, you know um, uh, treatment or the right healing for it or the doctor suggests some very very horrendous thing you have to undergo multiple surgeries you have to do this you have to do that and then you get scared so what do we do as indians we are we live in such a multicultural uh, society that we are perpetually looking for alternatives we are surrounded by alternatives in fact so the moment i fall sick and my friend comes to visit me and i say yaar last three days i have not been able to get out of bed because the aches and pains are so strong or i have become so weak he will immediately say you don't carry out this allopathic uh, thing i have an excellent homeopathic doctor come on take the homeopathic medicine you will be all right i know an ayurvedic doctor something something like that so that is how people uh, you know uh, are there so let us start looking at what are the alternatives that are most popular and which people resort to i have divided them into two categories 
and Anis has made a very nice systematic slides on it. So we'll just get a bird's eye view to understand what different types of people look for and the means and what they look for to see how I can heal myself from whatever is happening to me. So as a first instance, let us look at the medical uh, part of it from the medical related alternate therapies, which are most popular. There are many more which I've not listed here. But let's start with looking at the most popular uh, ones. You have acupressure, acupuncture, reflexology. So many people have been healed of so many things, uh, you know, in different uh, uh, ways by these things. There are, you know, recognized practitioners, qualified people, or experienced people. So people have often gone to such uh, practitioners and they have found uh, relief. The next comes things like aromatherapy, for example. Not very commonly used, but I do know of people who practice aromatherapy and using smells and aromas and whatever it is, some you know oils, and they do have a healing power. And uh, remember, the advantage of these is that they are what we call as non-invasive. They are not pumping any chemicals into your body. These oils or these perfumes, whatever they use, are only externally applied. Then comes things like programming the mind to heal itself, autogenic training. How you program your mind to start looking at it. One of the greatest examples of that was Norman Cousins, who wrote that amazing book called Anatomy of an Illness. 60 years down the line, it continues to be a bestseller. Norman Cousins is no more. He died of old age when he was 25 and he was told that he doesn't even have 25 weeks to live. But programming his mind he lived for another 40 years after uh, uh, that. Then we have things like bark flower remedies. This is an extension actually of uh, uh, homeopathy. The um, medicines or the pills that you use in bark flower are very similar to the homeopathic uh, uh, pills, but they are primarily concerned with, you know, pain relief, mental and health, uh, overall well-being and health relief, working on panic attacks, working on depression. There's a very wide variety of more than 30, 32 different types of remedies which are used under this category, which originated in Germany, but people have picked up all over the world and they are practicing it. I know I have friends who practice backflower remedies very effectively. Then biofeedback. This is not a very well-known, uh, very popular thing, but I do know of people who have been using biofeedback. That means your own body gives feedback to your brain as to where it is hurting and how it can be released and all that. I'm not going into the technicalities or the clinical aspects of it. I'm just giving you a bird's eye view <coughs> of the different types of alternatives and options that are available and which people do practice sometimes very, very successfully as contrasted to the traditional allopathic uh, treatments. Putting bones and muscles back in place, I still remember in my childhood, they used to have these uh, people called, uh, you know, setter bone putter. Apparently, they uh, originated from a small town called Puttur, which was, uh, you know, changed into putter. So the setter bone putters were people who used to put bones and muscles back in uh, uh, place just by doing some form of physiotherapy and all that, extremely painful, mind you. People used to be screaming away to glory, but instant uh, relief, no surgery, no long-term thing, no putting the hand or leg in a cast and all. Uh, so these are the type of uh, uh, things which are still popular. Unfortunately, they are not as popular as before. Poor people who cannot afford surgeries and orthopedic surgeons very often go to them and they find relief. Electrotherapy, electrical stimulation. This is used both by doctors and by physiotherapists and by people who are not medical uh, people because it doesn't really, again, as I said, it's not invasive, so it doesn't really need licensing or something. Stimulating uh, in the parts of your body through electrotherapy. All these are the different forms of how healing is uh, uh, done. Then, of course, you have the 
herbal medicine and grandmother's remedies. You will find some elderly neighbor lady saying, oh, you've got stomach ache, you've got this problem. Wait, I've got something in my roof garden. I'll go and pluck those flowers. I will boil it in water and I will mix it with this and I'll give it to you and see by tomorrow morning you will be healed. And very often it works. That's the beauty of it. So these grandmothers, I mean, I really wish somebody were to document them and carry forward because these are only carried forward by word of mouth. And when that particular grandmother dies, more likely than not, that wisdom and that knowledge dies with her. Then, of course, you have things like hydrotherapy, where you use water. In fact, a lot of you know physical healing takes place. People who have got stroke, people who have had accidents, people who have been uh, you know become pa paralyzed. Hydrotherapy using water is something which has given extremely good. Uh, relief to a lot of uh, people. And then lastly, you have things like massage, which is used in different forms in different ways, sometimes with oil, sometimes with something else. There are experts, there are, you know, <clears throat> these uh, health centers where you go and book yourself in for X number of days. And they do all this work with your uh, body. Why I gave you all this was to help you to understand that we have a problem of plenty. We have so many, uh, you know, different options and alternatives that sometimes people wonder, what should I do? Should I try this or should I try that? Will homeopathy work for me or will Ayurveda work for uh, me? So that is what I want you to understand that there is so much of you know, mind available. So that is where I come to and connect you back to counseling. The more you can talk, you know, bring it out. Catharsis, as we call it in the counseling language, empty yourself out. Have somebody reliable to whom you can share what is happening to you. That can do wonders. That is why counseling is referred to as a talking therapy. Therapy is healing. So talking therapy means healing by talking it out. As you are well aware, I'm sure most of you, counselors and psychotherapists do not give solutions. They do not use any of these techniques which I listed out to you and showed you. Yet, there is a relief to it. But here again, let me also tell you that other than on the medical side, there are various other alternative therapies which are non-medicine based uh, uh, also and a lot of people believe in it a lot of people you know go for it and a lot of people have been healed by it so i will not undermine their significance if it can help you so i collated them and i asked anis and she made it into a nice little slide you know about which are the, these uh, uh, ones massage was already there then something like let's say art therapy using art instead of words you are using pictures you are using sketches you are using paintings you are using art i have found this to be so effective with children children who do not want to talk children who have you know who clam up you give a child something to draw give him colored pencils or uh, you know, sketch pins and all that, and just let the mind go free. <clears throat> and so much comes out of it. And there are qualified and experienced and capable art therapists who know how to analyze art drawings, make the uh, person, the child or the adult draw certain things. And from there, you come to the healing part of the thing. Then, of course, you have music, dance, movement uh, therapy. Because when the body starts, you know, moving, be it, you know, there are some who go do what they call as movement therapy. There are some who do dance uh, uh, therapy. Either way, when the body gets up and starts moving, it starts affecting your mind also. Even in general, they say, if you have a mental problem, if you are in depression, if you are having panic attacks, if you are in confusion, if you are feeling lost, one of the 
essential parts of it is do a lot of simple physical exercise like going for a long walk for example if you're young enough and fit enough go for a jog so this is where music dance and movement therapy also comes into um, play then i have already mentioned to you religious uh, healing those people who have faith be it in a scripture be it in a you know a particular faith or a religion be it in a guru but if the faith can help the person heal please never put it down even if you do not believe in uh, that because that is what acts just to give you an example even medical doctors sometimes when they find that this patient is in pain this patient is complaining of so many ailments but i have not been able to find any cure i don't know what medicine to prescribe you know what doctors do they will not admit it to you openly they prescribe what is known as a placebo a placebo is a drug pill it could be a sugar pill it could be a multivitamin it could be anything they prescribe a placebo saying that i know that this will cure you i the qualified doctor and prescribing this take this twice a day morning and evening on a full stomach don't take it when your stomach is empty don't have tea or coffee just after that with all that instruction they give you and the person actually gets healed this is what you know happens even with religious uh, um, healing then you have pastoral which uh, you know where the priests use the faith to slowly inculcate into the uh, person that you know how to strengthen your faith how to you know read the proper scriptures you take part in some satsangs or in some hymns or something and that takes you into a sense of serenity a sense of peace and solace which helps you to heal then you may be aware that the catholic church has had this very strong tradition of what they call as a confessional the person goes into the church there's a small little cabin and there is a sort of grill between where you cannot see the priest and the priest cannot actually see you there are some small holes in that grill you can just make out a form that yes there is a person sitting uh, behind the screen and you confess your sins you confess what you have done wrong you confess that what regrets or shameful things you have and that itself for centuries now has proven to be an extremely cathartic uh, way and means all that the priest says is okay ask forgiveness from god pray to god read the bible whatever he has to say which has nothing to do with the actual uh, issue which the person has come with yet the person feels a lot of relief same thing with gurus babas different types of ancient healing there may be a guru who will give you a talisman saying that you know you tie this around your neck or something or you wear this particular uh, uh, ring the logic cannot define what is happening but like i said even when doctors can use placebos why not religious gurus and why not people you know who are taking you closer to your own uh, faith we have these wonderful uh, techniques which are very old uh, basically but in the last 10 20 years they have been revived and a lot of people are practicing it you must have heard of reiki you know whereby the person gets uh, healed similar to reiki is pranic uh, uh, healing thereby you know the person does not do anything invasive does not do anything except to tr transfer energy from one person to uh, uh, another and that itself seems to be giving this healing without even touching some of these you know do not involve even touch you just use your hands from a distance and, and the energy transfers from one person to another and the healing takes place etc people have you know said that where expert doctors and specialists could not heal certain things i went to this reiki practitioner and i am now feeling much better than what i was earlier like that you also have nlp neuro linguistic programming over the past few years it has suddenly become very popular neuro is the brain linguistic the language which the brain uses programming the language of the brain the same way as you take a small child and you teach him a language 
you teach him kannada or sanskrit or english or whatever language and that becomes a means for his life skills and his survival and his progress so this is a technique where you program the brain the language that is used is called nlp uh, by which you reprogram the brain to make the body heal hypnotherapy has been there for a very long time of course hypnotism is different from hypnotherapy the same way as art therapy is different from just art hypnotherapy is using hypnotism as a means to heal uh, people there are very few effective uh, practitioners but they are available here and there some of them are quite effective you have different uh, uh, methods like let's say meditation people so many people i know of they just meditate on a regular basis for x minutes say day and they find that their quality of life improves their ability to deal with not only emotional pain but sometimes even physical pain also improves mindfulness you may have heard of it uh, of late it is becoming quite uh, uh, you know popular a lot of people are practicing it getting your mind into the present getting your mind to focus on one specific thing away from all the others sort of you know uh, relieving the mind of the 100 thoughts which normally go in your mind and focusing only on the one particular uh, thing this in a nutshell are some of the non medical healings which are popular as i said there are many many more now the question that i wanted to raise up today is how do they compare or how do they compete with something as basic as counseling i would say that they can in many 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 ways supplement counseling but they cannot replace counseling man is a social animal whenever something good or bad happens to me one of the first things i want to do is to share with somebody if it is good news i can share it with anyone but if it is something which has hurt where i need healing and very particular about whom to share with and if i get the right person to share with and i get the right responses from that uh, person then automatically the healing starts taking place you can use any or many or all of the methods which we have listed out over here uh, to you but they cannot take away the significance of counseling finally you are aware of the fact that the mind controls the body whatever you may say it is the mind which decides it's a mind which tells the body you start paining you start feeling that discomfort to the extent that you may have heard of things like you know phantom limbs a person has had an accident his leg has been amputated he does not have a left leg but he comes to the doctor and says i am getting shooting pain in my left leg amazing no i mean in common sense or my doctor who is not very uh, you know holistic uh, looking would say don't be stupid how can i treat you what treatment can i give you to uh, remove your pain from your left leg when you don't have a left leg you get me but this is reality because the brain has not accepted that the leg has been amputated and the brain can go to the extreme of creating pain in your left leg and it can go to the extent of treating it also there's an amazing indian origin doctor called dr v s ramachandran in usa who did exceedingly good work on this by starting off with doing a simple thing like putting the legs and the one uh, existing leg and the stump of the other leg into a wooden uh, you know box type of thing with a mirror so when this person looks down 
in the mirror he sees his right leg as his left leg how the mirror you know changes from left to right and right to left and he actually sees his leg there and then the doctor starts healing that particular leg treating that particular leg whatever it could be massage it could be oil it could be whatever it is and the person finally says yes the pain in my left leg is gone now all this is an extension of what we call as counseling the catharsis emptying out nothing can uh, you know overcome the power of having another human being who understand that's why i started off with saying that if you are a lucky person that you got a family member a loved one or a best friend who says whatever happens you just come to me okay even if i'm not an expert in that area i will talk to experts i will explore i will find out but i will see to it that your healing takes place you just leave it to me that type of uh, thing how it used to happen in childhood do you remember whatever aches and pains whatever disappointments somebody bullied uh, me <coughs> teacher scolded me i fell down uh, when i was playing in the recess i was disappointed because i didn't get a chocolate all of them we went to our elders our parents our grandmother and just bawled it out just cried it out described from a to z what happened no solution was given no practical you know treatment was given but the healing took place because essentially in very simple terms that is what counseling or psychotherapy is all about if we understand that and we always connect to that regardless of what other therapy what other treatment what other you know healing processes that you are uh, uh, using if you understand this significance never ever let go i feel sad for people who say i don't believe in counseling i want to do things by myself how can a counselor solve my problems it is my life exactly the counselor does not solve your problems the counselor actually tells you that it is your life and you have to work on it okay i already know that then why should i go to a counselor because the counselor is like a mental mirror the counselor shows you things which you cannot see the same way as you may comb your hair for half an hour but you do not know whether your hair is in place till you see a mirror the counselor is that mental mirror it is only when you experience it that you actually understand the significance in fact every year when you know a new batch of people comes to us to be trained as counselors we have this one year part time program which is now in fact starting next week when we start off on that one of the things that we train them into is to become a counselee before you become a counselor talk it over see how it feels when you share something deeper at the emotional level with somebody who accepts you as you are who does not interrupt who listens carefully who is expressing empathy understanding putting himself in your shoes who has got the patience who can give you a few positive strokes and encouragement and motivation here and there and you find that you are feeling far far better that's why i said this is something you have to experience it right so i'll take my one minute break here is seema to give you one or two very interesting uh, announcements and then i'll be back hello once again so ali was just talking about uh, you know the talking therapy and how uh, effective it is to talk it over right so uh, he was also telling you about you know how we go to friends or a family member and things like that so today evening in fact 
uh, from 4 o'clock to 5.30. We have a talk uh, uh, by Ali in our classroom here in RT Nagar. And this is for DCS 23 students, the ones who are enrolled, whose program has already, we've done the soft launch. We are starting off uh, next Saturday. So for them, we are uh, having this uh, program. The topic is how is a counselor different from a friend? So if you also would like to know, just get in touch with us. You're most welcome. This is between 4 to 5.30 today evening in our Banjara Academy training house. So that is something that's happening today. And like I was telling you, next Saturday, we are kickstarting. We have the inaugural of our DCS 23. Why we call it DCS 23 is because 23 is the year of graduation. So it's a one year part time program, uh, the diploma in counseling skills. So the inaugural is happening at IAT. Uh, auditorium in the afternoon from 2.30 to 5.30. So this is for all our students who have enrolled. And in the morning, what we are doing is we are uh, organizing a fest called Emofi, right? The selfie of our emotions. Very nice, very interesting. We are, we've been working on it for the last uh, uh, couple of months on that. So come for that. See, uh, Anis has put up the colorful poster also. So the timings are from 10.30 to 1.00. Uh, and it's uh, free and open to all. Please come. A lot of assessment uh, tests, personal counseling, career counseling. So come and experience. There'll be speakers who will be talking about the various aspects of uh, counseling. So come and join us for that. So whole day of fun at IAT from 10.30 to evening, 5.30, 6 o'clock. There'll be food stalls and all of that. So you all are most welcome. So this is what's happening in the next one week. So thank you. I'll hand you over back to Ali. In all these years and years, every now and then I come across somebody who has used very unique, very alternative uh, you know, means to heal themselves when they underwent issues. And I'm very open to listening to them because it keeps on expanding my horizons and makes me aware of how this vast universe has got so much of diversity that we we can never have to you know feel distressed that nothing is happening or there is no solution like that for example kameshwari said that i could relate myself with the third category of faith when it comes to certain uh, opportunities so each person has had experiences including let me also caution you good and bad experiences so here i am looking at the chat box and waiting to hear from you what have been your experiences or at the same time, what have been your doubts or questions that you would like to throw open so that I can give my comments, others can give their uh, comments. Let us see what are the type of issues that you have uh, come across and what you would like to share. We'll start with Navina. Healing means feeling whole and complete. So any therapy which makes you feel that serves the purpose. Also, counseling is the base of any therapy. Exactly, Navina, you got the perfect answer. Until and unless a person opens up and talks, you cannot implement any therapy. So that is what I was telling you in the first half. And I'm glad that Navina feels this way. I'm sure there are many, many more of you who do agree with uh, me on this uh, uh, issue that Unless and until you share, your burden does not reduce. You bottle it up and whatever treatment, whatever medicines, whatever therapy you are getting, somewhere you start choking within uh, yourself. So, and the beauty of it is that counseling is not competing with any other uh, form of healing. You may want to be completely dedicated to your faith or your guru or your scriptures. Go ahead. Counseling in no way negates what you are doing. You may want to believe that only surgery can take care of this, this, this problem that you are having. And the surgeon has said that you will have to undergo this open heart surgery, this, this, this. And I am going to go ahead. Please do. Counseling has got nothing to do with it. But even as you go in for the surgery, Talking it over with 
a counselor, a trusted uh, person, relieves even the pain of the surgery. People have been known to heal faster to post-operative pain when they could talk it over with people. Okay. Parveen says, I healed after my PG diploma in psychological counseling skills and used up all the 12 sessions that we were uh, given. Exactly. So learning the basics of how, you know, the healing takes place, what are the, you know, uh, nuances and what are the do's and don'ts of psychological counseling that itself can help you to heal yourself. So you talk it over with friends. You say, this is what I have learned. This is the new things that I have uh, uh, got. This is what I have, uh, you know, uh, this is what I'm feeling. This is what makes me happy. This is what does not make me happy. Each of these things helps in such a significant uh, um, way. Because let us understand and accept that, you know, good health, be it mental or physical, is not just the absence of illness. We need to continuously keep improving both our physical and our mental uh, health, right? Physical uh, health, most of us do know and do practice ways and means of improving it. So somebody says that I get up early in the morning and sit and do meditation or yoga. Somebody goes for a walk or a jog. Somebody goes regularly to the gym and does a workout under the supervision of the person who is um, running the, you know, the uh, gym. Somebody else says that I found great joy in swimming. So I'm a regular swimmer. I go to a pool and I swim and I get my uh, uh, healing. In fact, Roshan is saying, I have helped many people suffering from spondylitis with pranic healing. Normally, you go to a you know, allopathic doctor and he would say spondylitis does not really have a cure. But Roshan says, they have been completely cured in one sitting and that gave me immense satisfaction. Now, imagine the satisfaction to the person who is suffering from spondylitis. You don't have to give any logical reasons. You don't have to give scientific facts or evidence behind what happens if the spondylitis pain, which is very, very painful, if it goes away by whatever method, which I repeat again, like Reiki, what uh, Roshan said, is non-invasive. And in most cases, it's not expensive. So it is not as though you have to spend lakhs of rupees like in a surgery or something. You can still get healed, right? Surekha says, I am into premarital counseling with a counselee, a counselee who is about to get married. He says that the girl he is seriously considering ma marrying has bisexual tendencies. How can I guide uh, him? The first step that I would endeavor if I were you, Surekha, is to try and see if that girl is open to counselling. Unless and until you meet up with the girl and hear her version of uh, it, it is only what he is telling you. So it becomes very difficult, right? Okay. If she comes, you hear her out. Let's see her version, what she has to say about it and all that. And you can respond. First, you can respond to her. And then subsequently, you can respond to her fiancé. Supposing she refuses. And this man is coming back to you and saying that I am worried. Now, you do not focus on the bisexuality of his fiancé. You focus on his emotions. How acceptable is it for you to marry and spend the rest of your life with a person who has declared herself to be a bisexual? So often people get into trouble because they think, no, no, once she marries me and we have a wonderful romantic life, she'll forget about everything else and, you know, she will be drawn only to me. I can make her very happy romantically, sexually. Those are all fantasies. It doesn't work that way. You have to accept people as is there is. And you as the counselor can help the person to have that acceptance. Navina says, also, I feel faith is another factor that helps you to heal through any therapy. The counselor and therapist only acts as a catalyst. The person heals himself or herself. Absolutely right. But how and why does the person heal himself? Because... 
he has faith. In fact, that brings me to another important thing. If a person has faith in the counselor, the healing is far better. I have counseled people who have come for counseling only because they were pressurized by somebody. Their spouse said, no, no, unless you go for counseling, I'm walking out on you. The boss said, you have to go for counseling, otherwise you may lose your job. So this person is coming under pressure. The person does not actually believe in counseling. The person does not have faith in the uh, counselor. Believe me, the chances of success are much, much lower. So one of the things that we do, if I come across such a person who seems to have been pressurized, I back off, take one step back and say, think over. Would you really like to go for counseling? Would you really like to go through this process? What are the possible outcomes of it? What, what benefit it may get you? What harm can it do to you? And I get back to focusing on the point that it cannot do any harm, I assure you. Because not only counseling is non-invasive, counselors do not give suggestions or solutions also. They only empower you. So by going to counseling, you either will benefit or you will not benefit. So it's just your time that you are investing in it, right? So think it over. These are subtle ways by which we try to build that faith that, yes, I think counseling might help me. No harm in trying it out. Maybe I will benefit from it. Maybe I should put in that effort and see how things uh, go. That is how you use the uh, you know, process of counseling. Roshan says, grandmother's recipes work wonders. I have seen many of them and shared and cured many people. I mentioned that in the first half of the session that so many of these ancient uh, traditions, grandmother's recipes, you know, people grow certain plants and they have certain leaves and certain roots, which they use as means for uh, healing. And as I also mentioned that, unfortunately, most of them are dying out with the grandmothers. I really wish somebody would take interest and record it and save it for uh, posterity. Ha, ah, Saraf Sab is back. He is from Bid in Maharashtra. It's always a pleasure to welcome him. Saraf Sab says, going to garden, performing religious practices, going and living with nature besides routine day-to-day -day life, performing yoga and massage helps and acts as a catalyst to scientific counseling. You have listed out, Saraf Sab, all the points which I showed you in the beginning. And many more also other than what you have said. I've also listed out a few more. And as I said, keep in mind, none of them are contradictory to counseling. None of them are competing with counseling. Counseling is not an either of. Counseling is the basic thing which is always there. And you keep adding on and building on whatever else you uh, have. Shika, also welcome back after a long time. Shika says, true Ali, it's all about faith in the counselor. Who better than me to know how counseling can help a human? So, you know, when you hear somebody like this, when somebody mature, capable person who has carved out her own life, when she shares that I know how important is the faith in the counselor and I will you know, reaffirm to you that this works and this is how it is. You cannot have a better testimony than uh, uh, that. Renu says, I believe that any therapy might heal the psychosomatic disease through placebo. If it is physiological, allopathy is ultimate. Counseling definitely helps in all. That is what I'm saying. Okay, it is physiological. It is something to do with an organ that has to be removed and that can only be done through a surgical um, process. There is no other alternative. Yes, go ahead. At the same time, remember that even physiological ailments have been cured by alternative uh, means. There was a time when I was told that I have a disc prolapse and within the next 72 hours, I must do a spinal uh, surgery. Otherwise, I can get paralyzed. A very eminent orthopedic surgeon had said this. 
I had a friend who was at that time an acquaintance and who has become a very close friend of mine who is a physiotherapist. He asked me, Ali, do you have faith in me? Do you believe that I can do something? I'm not as high funda as the orthopedic uh, surgeon, but you know that I will not let you down. I will not misguide you. I said, sure, boss. Just tell me what to do. And believe me, without cutting me open, without you know uh, causing any further damage or any other uh, you know, surgical procedures, he healed me completely. It's been 10 years that I am totally functional. Renu says, you are not losing anything other than time. No side effects. So better go for counseling. I want to add to that. When you go for counseling, you are actually not losing time. Even if you say, I went to this counselor, a lot of people say that. I went to this counselor. What? That counselor didn't have any solution. The counselor couldn't help me. The counselor just said, uh, speak, speak, speak. Tell me more. Tell me this. Tell me that. Made me talk about all my, my whole life. She made me talk about. But she still didn't have any solution. So I came off. I don't think counseling helped me. But you know something? My uh, life right now is better. I think I am working my way out of it. I think I'm managing much better now than what I was managing earlier. Now the person does not understand the con connection to counseling. Why is it that you are being able to do better? Why is it that you are being able to think better? Why is it that you are being able to resolve your issues or cope with them? It was because the counselor gave you an opportunity to sit and talk and talk and talk. And the counselor responded in the ways which I have mentioned by being non-judgmental, by being a good listener, by being empathic, by being patient. And that itself was a healing. That is what I'm emphasizing on today, that there is no tangible result. There is no thermometer like how a doctor will show you when you came here, you had 104 degrees after I treated you. Now you have come back to 98.6. So that means I have healed you. Unfortunately, no counselor has a thermometer or a blood pressure apparatus or any other means to show you clinically with evidence how it has helped. It is up to you to understand its significance. Sureka says, this lady has realized that her husband is into heavy drinking. She has a 27-year-old son who is arrogant and entitled. She just wants to run away. I can very well understand. On the one side, she is must be suffering because husband is into heavy drinking. And if they've been married for 30 years, then I can understand what all she must have gone through, how much she must have tolerated, how much she must have, you know, tried to including hide from the fact many wives hide from society and from relatives that the husband is a heavy uh, drinker. They hide the misbehavior of their husbands when they are drunk. And on top of that, if she now has a son who is behaving in this manner, you can imagine how you know, miserable she must be feeling. And when she says that I feel like running uh, away, when she says that I feel like running uh, away, it's very understandable, right? She's come to that uh, point. So when she has come to that point, what does she need? She needs to find an alternative to physically running away by running to the counselor. And the time that she spends with the counselor is as though she has left her home, her husband, her son and has gone off to some hill station or some beach resort. That is what counseling uh, does. So even in cases like this, where as you see, there's no solution. The counselor cannot stop the husband from drinking. The counselor cannot change the behavior pattern of the son. But the counselor can still play a very effective role in healing the pain that this lady is going uh, through. Navina says, personally, I feel when we are connected to self through meditation and other ways, you would be guided as to which path to take. Yes, this is another wonderful thing that I've seen. There are people who say that when I get confused, when I find that there are so many options, so many alternatives, or even when I feel that there are no options and no alternatives left and I am stuck with this uh, thing and I'm going to suffer miserably because of this, I do something like, 
mindfulness, meditation. So what is this process? This is a process where you declutter your mind. You remove all the unwanted things from your mind. In the normal course, the mind is thinking of 10 things. I have to go to the kitchen and cook. I have to pay those taxes. I have to visit that person who is not uh, well. I have to take care of this, this, this. I have to go out and meet my friend. Now, when you are meditating or when you go into this mindfulness consciousness, you try to declutter yourself. You remove all the thoughts and come back to your own self. And then when you think of the issue, how to resolve it, inevitably you start finding solutions which you were not able to think of earlier. Exactly the same thing happens in counseling. When you sit with the counselor and talk, you will find that the mind is now looking at so many options which you are not thinking of. Navina says counseling teaches us to respect every individual, every therapy and be non-judgmental and accept a holistic approach. That is what a true counselor should be. Because I keep repeating, the counselor is not in competition with doctors, physicians, surgeons, alternate healers, faith healers. They have a their own role to play, but it is entirely up to the counselee what he or she would like to choose. And the counsellor acts, I come back to the same point, as a mental mirror to reflect back to you what is going on in your mind, what are the things that are good, what are the things that you would like to try out, what do you think are the options open to you including i keep reminding that if a counselor uh, you know cannot find if a counselee is in a situation where there is no solution at all it's something which has happened and which is irreversible the trauma the you know tragedy is not going to go away the counselor helps in coping one person faces a major setback in life and collapses. Another person faces an equally bad setback in life and starts struggling how to come out of it. That is the difference, the coping ability. So the counselor can also play a very significant role in helping the person understand that what you have, what has happened to you, you cannot change. But how you deal with it, how you cope with it, you can uh, change. Who was that great man who said, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Sunita says, I know a person who goes uh, for depression treatment on and off, still not cured as no counseling has been done. Exactly, Sunita, this is what I see. Somebody goes, let's say, to a psychiatrist who puts you on to antidepressants. But if the depression is reactive, the depression has come in because of circumstances, because of what other people have done to her, because of whatever she has faced in life, unless that is resolved, the medicine acts only like a paracetamol. I have fever. I take a crocin. Fever comes down. I'm happy. Six hours later, the fever is back. So very often, we need to understand that while psychiatrists can do a wonderful job of relieving your uh, depression and getting you back to your feet, it also has to be backed up again by counseling. Okay. Uh, Krishnan says, how is a mentor different from counselor? What kind of trust should be on with counselor? Firstly, what is a, a mentor is a person who takes control of the life of the mentee and guides. That I being experienced, I being more qualified, I being more knowledgeable, I will help you to take the steps. So you should take this decision. You should move like this. You should quit this job. You should ask for this. You should increase your learning or your qualification. That is what a mentor does. A counselor says it's your life. I will do the handholding with you. I will walk with you. I will nudge you whenever it is necessary. But I will not tell you how to run your life. The whole process of counseling is defined in one word, which is empowerment. And when you ask how to have that faith, 
the counselor is trained to project himself or herself in such a way that the person feels connected the person feels reassured it is how you talk to them hasn't it happened to you that you have gone to a doctor a lawyer an architect or whoever it is and just talking to that person 10 minutes you realized yes i think i will go ahead i think i can trust this person i can have faith in this person just by talking to that person so if you build up this skill of you know understanding human behavior understanding empathy as we um, say then what happens you say yes i can trust this person and you go ahead putting your faith in that person and the process goes on very often it helps it gives you major relief sometimes it gives you only partial relief in extreme cases it does not give you any relief but it doesn't make matters worse it has helped you to introspect where later on in some other issue or some other challenge you are in a better position to work out for yourself renu says many people are hesitant to approach counselor very stubborn and ruin their lives exactly when would renu this is what i feel all of us should be ambassadors to this we should work on helping people understand what is counseling and that is one of the reasons why i took up this topic this saturday so that we are very clear when somebody says no i don't believe in the um, this i believe only in meditation please go ahead i'm very happy for you i believe only in this guru or i believe only in uh, allopathy or uh, ayurveda or homeopathy please go ahead we are not competing we are in no way you know coming in between that process in fact i would tell you the most effective physicians including a lot of homeopaths whom i know they look into the emotional aspect also before they prescribe medicines and therefore they are far more effective than other people because they also give the patient some form of mental relief shaista says my niece is having compulsive hand washing issue she is 12 this is after the epidemic yes as the epidemic has really brought out very very unexpected and very sad issues this little child who must have been all of 9 or 10 years when the epidemic hit and 2 years of her life she has been you know clustered in within the four walls so obviously anxiety has developed obviously some sort of fears have developed and since so much was spoken about how covid expands you were told that you have to wash your hands for 30 seconds sing happy birthday to you twice while you are scrubbing your hands with uh, uh, soap all this has given certain you know inputs into children and adults which we need to take sensitively and heal it will take time it will take effort but it can be done she can be taught how to overcome it and come over from it Renu says medicine for depression is very essential when it is needed and helps a lot. Later you can go for therapy. Exactly like that's what I said. That it's not uh, either or. There's no competition. Surika says on a lighter note, though I am not college educated, I have been addressed as doctor by some of my uh, counselees. What a privilege! Yes, Surika, I would say that you are a doctor. How do you define a doctor? you can ask your elders how in villages there used to be doctors forget about college education they never went to school also but they actually healed people and people would call them doctors or vaids in those uh, days so that's what it is all uh, about isn't it ha ah, sunita is asking can i connect with you and learn a few things most welcome sunita and any one of you we have always thrown our doors open seema keeps putting our website email id and our phone numbers continuously in the chat box to tell you that you can get in touch we are actually a team of uh, you know counselors any one of them but if you feel that you want to talk to me personally either pick up the phone and call up on either of the numbers which are being put on the uh, chat box here they are right now or if you would like to do it through electronic uh, means you can send us an email describing what are the issues and how to deal with it now before we overshoot the time which we are very very strict in doing it i would like to leave you with this wonderful thought that 
if you think children sometimes throw tantrums and make life difficult, I want to tell you adults also throw tantrums. And that is what I'm going to discuss with you next Saturday, 11 o'clock. Bye-bye. Right, this is the topic for next week. And like I said, next week we are in IAT. So Ali will be going live on Facebook from IAT. This is the topic. Very interesting. Adults also throw tantrums. So see you there. Have a nice week. And let's meet next Saturday. Bye-bye.